Hello and welcome to this video on SimSig Wolverhampton. So it's been a while since I've made any of these introduction videos for SimSig simulations, but somebody asked me on YouTube the other day if I could do one on Wolverhampton. So here it is. Fortunately, Wolverhampton is quite straightforward, so it can easily be controlled by a single operator. And although it's kind of a busy simulation there's, there's quite a lot going on but it's fairly consistent the patterns are fairly consistent so uh, it's quite quick to learn so let's just go through the screens there is a map on the simsig website which shows where wolverhampton sits in relation to the rest of the railways around birmingham if you're interested it's kind of interesting to see how all of these different lines connect together but basically all of the mainline traffic that comes north out of birmingham new street comes through wolverhampton pretty much all of it so the main line which is here so to birmingham new street here at golton junction as the trains come up here they go through wolverhampton most trains stop here but not all of them and then this line here goes to a which is up here and that goes towards stafford crew um some parts of north wales Preston, Manchester, Liverpool, Carlisle, Glasgow, Edinburgh, uh, and all the rest of it. So that's kind of the, the main line. There's also a branch here. It's quite the, the part that we control is quite short. And that is the Shrewsbury line, which goes up towards places like Telford and uh, Shrewsbury and Chester and places like that. So certain trains, like you can get to Aberystwyth this way. But you can also get to Aberystwyth via crew. So depending on the train, it might go, go one way or the other. And then this line here is basically an avoiding line. So it goes towards the east of the main line. And it's called the Grand Junction. It was originally the Grand Junction Railway. So it goes down through sort of Bescott. There are a load of good line, goods lines down that way. And you can also get to the east of Birmingham here, down, down here, without having to go through Birmingham New Street, which is very, very congested and has, you know, many hundreds of passenger trains a day. So this way you can get towards uh, Water Orton and out towards Derby and that direction, the cross-country trains direction. You can get back onto the main line um, going towards London, Euston, if you want to. And you can get across to Rugeley and places like that. So tends to only be freight trains and empty coaching stock here. The only exception that I've seen so far is a train that doesn't run any longer, but it does during the timetable of Wolverhampton, which is the uh, Marleybone to Wrexham train. So it used to be a sort of intercity train private company that, that ran that. And they weren't allowed to stop at certain places as part of the... Uh, what do you call it the agreement the leasing agreement for the service so it comes through from this direction up through the branch uh, sometimes it stops in Wolverhampton sometimes it doesn't I think it only stopped for a change of driver and then it goes along the avoiding line it then joins again south of Birmingham New Street and then goes down I assume it goes to Coventry and then probably goes off towards Leamington and heads its way over to to Marleybone in that direction uh, I think there are only two a day uh, so there aren't really very many otherwise all of the mainline traffic going through here so let's work our way from left to right this is pretty straightforward the trains appear as they do on every other simulation obviously like normal you can click on it and see where it's going to so this one is telling you it's going down the main line towards golden junction not surprising one one oh it's a class one train so it's obviously going to be going to to golden junction and you've got plenty of time here you've got all of these signals they're all automatic signals and if you don't know if you're a beginner to simsig which might be why you're watching this an automatic signal just does its own thing so when the block ahead is empty depending on which of the subsequent blocks is occupied then it will show green yellow double yellow if the block that it's protecting is occupied then it will show red but all of that happens automatically which is great because obviously the signal are having to operate all of these would be a bit of a pain uh, occasionally a, sing a signal also has a little emergency plunger on there so on the old panels it was a little pop out switch and the idea of that is although it's an automatic signal and will work in normal or normal automatic way 
in certain areas particularly next to level crossings you sometimes see them by tunnels as well let's say something happens in the tunnel well you don't want a train to shoot through the signal the automatic signal and carry on so you can hit that with the right mouse button and uh, left cancels it and that effectively puts the signal to red even if it would normally be green so if i just slow this down a second so i can show you some stuff by unpausing it so you see that signal there showing double yellow uh make sure they're in the train approaching i will get penalized so if i right click that you can see that signal immediately goes to red and then all of the signals behind it also act in the same way as if that was just a normal red signal so that one goes to single yellow if there was a route across here that would be double yellow that would be green so those emergency plungers uh, sit there on on certain signals so you've got plen plenty of time to get through here the there is an up goods loop i haven't needed to use it so far you can see i'm at half 11 in the morning on the the default timetable and it can be quite tricky if you were a proper signaller and you're controlling wolverhampton you would obviously have a lot of experience of trains that are coming in if they're very early or very late and whether they're likely to cause a problem with trains that are following them so a real signaller would be more likely to use a goods loop it's see a, a freight train which may be put in front of a passenger train and you just need to put it in there to allow the passenger train to pass uh, like i say haven't used it yet there's also four ashes sidings here and a ground frame i'm not going to take you through the operation of it lots of the ground frames behave differently depending on what the real ground frame looks like so in this case for example there are no signals controlled by the ground frame it's a very basic one where signals would be given by what's called a hand signal man so somebody who's authorized to tell the train that it's safe to go onto the main line and that that would happen that that person would call the signal box and say the train's ready at four ashes uh is it okay to proceed and then obviously the person controlling this part of the of the line would say yes or no and then they would signal to the train to tell them it's safe to go you can find the instructions of these as you can with all ground frames in the simulation manuals on the website but like i said they all behave slightly differently so if you do need it uh, we get the luxury in simsig of hitting pause and then digging out the instructions and working out what to do whereas obviously in real life they would need to know how all of that works beforehand so that's this part um, in the same way there is a down goods loop now it's a little bit confusing because a couple of trains are booked for a stop at Bushbury Junction a couple of freight trains and that would usually mean that a change of driver and usually what happens you'd expect a stop at Bushbury Junction to be perhaps down here in the goods loop by Bushbury Junction but usually the trains actually stop up here by signal 36 so just be aware of that you might kind of think oh he's going to do a stop let's signal him into the loop and let the train wait in there but just be aware of that keep an eye on the train when it comes through don't set a route from the signal wait for it to stop and then you can watch the train if you bring up um the not that one that one and you can see the list when it comes up saying stopped at wolverhampton or stopped at bushbury junction then you know that that's a scheduled stop and he's not waiting for the signal whereas if it says waiting at signal wn36 you know that the train's expecting to leave so you can work it out but just watch out for that again haven't needed to really use this uh, in fact i'm not sure i've used it at all i used it once when i didn't need to so i would tend to leave most of these signals on automatic across these junctions just so that you don't have to keep setting the route every time a train comes through now we have a slightly complicated junction here it's not quite as bad as it sounds now most traffic coming down here let's say 80 90 percent of it will go through into wolverhampton and then out the other side through here some freight trains will turn left at bushbury junction so anything going towards bescott and darleston they'll be they'll show as darleston junction on the timetable so if you click a train like that to see its locations the last one will be darleston junction if it's a train that needs to go up here and you just signal from wn25 straight up to wn23 and then that will go straight through but the other bit that's drawn slightly awkwardly here is some trains come from the north from stafford but they actually go around this loop they go through here see it says oxley cord and this line here 
goes through to here which then goes up towards Oxley and the Mid Wales line here so sometimes you'll see a train it will usually say Cosford as the last entry in the timetable but you know just have a, a quick look at it in fact there might be one here no none of those are going to chess oh that one there so if you click here the last entry for those trains going that way is Cosford even if they're not stopping there they'll say Cosford so that's how you know so just be a little bit careful here this is probably the place where you need to make most decisions about which way a train's going but because you have so much notice of the trains you've got plenty of time to go right the next one is going to Wolverhampton great I'll leave the signal maybe the one after that's going to Darleston up here maybe it's going to Cosford round the loop now as soon as he gets to this signal you notice that's actually Oxley's signal not ours so as soon as we signal a train to there that's the end of our dealings with it all of the rest of this loop and this part here is all under the control of Oxley so although we'll see the um, train describers showing the trains um, and roughly where they are all of that is controlled by someone else so we don't need to worry about that as soon as we've hit Oxley signal 58 then we're good to go likewise uh, some of the trains will come here and they'll come the opposite way round. they appear here very quickly um, as soon as they sort of reach here basically but don't be fooled it doesn't mean quick set the signal go you know because it's about to get there it takes a good few minutes i'd say at least five minutes uh, maybe slightly longer for the train to actually get round to here and you'll see this part light up red that little fork and all of this light up as red but only once the train is left here because the speed limit's only 15 uh, don't panic about trains coming out of here wait for it to get pretty much towards the signal before you decide whether you're going to let it out or not onto the main line and then from here again you can signal it straight onto the main or via the goods loop but like I say most cases you'd be better off holding it here so this that's that part trains that are coming into Wolverhampton from Oxley you'll get a you know a notification like you normally do where it says train arriving at Cosford it you know the train number will pick will appear here and depending on if it's a stopping train or not they'll take a few minutes to get here so again you've got some time you've got a bit more time than you do here so if a train appears there and there at the same time it's really important that you check which one's scheduled to hit Wolverhampton first um, because it's not always obvious so we can look at that and see Wolverhampton 1136 Wolverhampton 11.39 okay so we know that this one is due in first so once 1 and 51 has gone past here then we can signal this up into Wolverhampton North Junction now the station isn't particularly complicated or hard to understand just be careful as with all stations with uh, locking lines with an overlap so let's say for example a classic one is you you know you want to get a train into let's say platform four but then you need to get a train out of carriage siding two into platform three so all of the usual just being careful these trains if they're stopping they're going to be slowing down anyway so you don't need to set six blocks in front of it in all the way into the platform um and the other thing that you have in wolverhampton on um most but not all directions these little call on arrows so if you signal from here to the call on arrow you won't get the overlap at the end which means that that signal will only clear when that train gets very close to it now the good thing about that is it means I can get one L85 out the other end of it whereas if I try to set oh, it's not going to cancel because I'm paused let's unpause it second if I try to set that to the main signal it would say the points are locked in other words you want this overlap so you can go come in quite quickly but there isn't an overlap because another train is signaled to leave so you can use the yellow arrows but but just be careful there is that's going to cost you a bit of time because that signal isn't going to go to yellow until the train's much closer to it whereas if you use the main signal the the train will see the yellow signal in advance and it won't need to slow down and it can go straight in and stop there so there's a little time penalty but if you've got a train like this that's leaving any time now you're probably better off letting the train come in under a call on signal rather than you know waiting for this train to fully uh, depart to then set it through on the main one 
so sorry if that's confusing you notice that platform three and four are mainly designed to go in this direction so there are no call on arrows in this direction even though you can send trains from the south into any of these um, now the next thing that's worth noting is that it's quite common to turn trains around in platform two so this train 1G11 is the Euston to Wolverhampton service, what we used to call the Birmingham Shuttle. I'm not sure what it's called now. And in order to get into that platform, you have two options. You see these blue via buttons. These are mandatory, even if you're going from, say, here into platform five and there's only one route you can take, you still have to use the via button. So signal via signal and then that will um, set, set the route for you so going into platform two you can either come along here and use the bottom via button which takes you in here now that's nice because that overlap doesn't block this junction here so you can set a train you can signal the train into platform two from the south but still get a train in from the north so that's really nice but then there's no automatic um, train uh, what they call them on here train reporting number insertion so you would then look at that and it says well the next train is 1b42 so what you can then do is right click the signal and hit the uh, interposed train description and do 1b42 alternatively you can do i to interpose like nice word put in 1b42 and then click on a signal and it will put the code into there for you and that's now ready to depart southbound to be the wolverhampton to london return journey basically so there's a bit of that going on um, you can see here there are actually two sets of signals on platform two uh, i haven't used them yet but theoretically you could have one train already in here and you could bring another train into the south but notice that it's not really signaled in both directions to use half a platform. It's only signaled southbound um, <clears throat> to do that. So I haven't seen that necessary at any point. But um, but yeah, you could theoretically signal the train to that signal um, southbound and then put another one behind it with, on a separate signal if you wanted to. Nothing happens really here in the yards and stuff. I'm sure if I wait long enough, there might be one train a day comes out just to make it interesting. But by this point, it's a modern era, 2004, 2014, modern timetable, very little freight really compared to the passenger train. So not really much going on there. There is one gotcha, and I'm not sure if it's a mistake or if it's just one of those things they say tests the signaler's wisdom. But there is a morning scheduled service to come from carriage siding 2, which shows as Wolverhampton carriage sidings, platform 2. And it's, it's timetable to go into platform 2. But as you can see from this layout, it can't get into platform 2. So what happens is, as a signaler, if that did happen, hopefully you would already know that that's a problem beforehand. But if that's going to happen, it's up to you. Am I going to put it in four? Am I going to put it in three? They're, they're my only choices, depending on what's coming southbound. It, you know, if you've got a passenger train coming in like this, it's expect platform four. You kind of need these passenger trains to go into their timetable platform. Although SimSig penalizes you a bit in real life that would be a real pain in the neck if you're at platform three and then you've got to go up the footbridge over the footbridge down the other side just to change platform so try and think like a, a real signal signaler and that will obviously help um, trains coming out the southbound also need to use the via buttons in the same way as coming in so again even if there's only one way out then you need to click um, entry signal via button exit signal uh, the next thing about this is you can't really see it from here, but this block out of platform five is actually quite long. So if you want a train to go, um, which way is it blocked now? If you want a train to go up here, then you need to actually cancel down this signal and you need to take this signal off of automatic if you're trying to get something out of platform five because the overlap of this signal into here interferes with the junction so it's a little bit annoying this uh, 2w28 is going to go into platform five um in fact if i unpause it oh, did i press the right button and i'll just speed it up a bit and leave that running just so you can see what i mean and then i can show you that while i carry on talking um <clears throat> so yeah you just got got to be a, a little bit careful with the junction the last thing to mention about wolverhampton station 
are the fact that it's kind of designed for locomotives really you have these white shunting triangles here and what they're designed for mainly uh, are sorry let me uh, just work out what's going on here so this is another example of Wolverhampton 31 Wolverhampton 36 you've got to be a bit careful sometimes the train runs early so you need to um, make sure that it's not coming out of sync um, that's leaving so I'm gonna leave that a little while and see if I can get the main signal um, these shunt signals are designed to take locomotives off the front of the train and there are two reasons why they're kind of important to use one of them is that it uses a shunt signal rather than a main signal so that's kind of correct because it allows the locomotive driver to basically you know take take things steady at their leisure and um, the other thing is in the case of simsig and other electronic control systems like that it means that this head code stays on the train and doesn't leave with the locomotive which would then require you to sort of faff around and, and put it back on again so if you're taking a locomotive off again doesn't happen in this timetable uh, it doesn't happen in this era but if you did have a timetable somehow that um that was doing that then um then you need to use the the white triangles so uh yeah just just to know that and then obviously once you've got a, a train as far as a white triangle you can then use the shunt signal behind it to then put it into a siding or take it back to oxley carriage sidings or do whatever so if i just pause there a second so hopefully now you can see what i mean if if i want to come out of platform five to go southbound i need to cross this so that isn't a crossover it, it's actually a diamond crossing so i need to come down here and across this crossing here if i set this signal which i do need to do you can see that the overlap past the next signal blocks that so if i need that train to come out i have to cancel that signal i probably shouldn't have done that but because there's a train approaching and I might be right because I'm paused. Um, I'd have to cancel that signal down before that train can get out. But be careful because if that train is approaching, when you cancel that signal down and take it off of automatic, then you'll get a penalty because that train will see that signal possibly change from double yellow to yellow. And it's then going to go, oh, what's going on? Then it stops and it calls you up and say, what's going on? And it sort of slows everything down. Uh, so just be a little bit careful. Um, so, yeah, so that's all of that if we go southbound um then there's not really much else to say there is a morning train that goes into the steel terminal and it kind of works pretty much as you would expect it to you stop it at this signal so you need to make sure that this is already cleared before it gets there and then obviously you have to clear down this signal and then you can just set a route straight to the steel terminal um, unlike certain other simulations this one doesn't require you to call anybody so um, that can be really helpful so this example here see 1m51 is scheduled to leave at 33 and it's running a little late so and it's already given train ready to start so i kind of need to oh need the via button i kind of need to let that one go even though this one's trying to get to platform three so i could wait for that train to leave but like i say it's probably quicker to use the call on signal and let that come in at its own leisure so yeah the steel terminal is pretty easy there's nobody to call you to signal the train in there i'm sure it will um, come back out uh, there's another train just coming at cosford and you can see it's going to stafford so this is one that's going to go around that loop so i don't need to worry about it till it gets to here which is fine and then i guess the the last well the last thing about this line here for the most part it's all automatic if you leave these signals here on automatic you'll notice that this is where you pass control over to birmingham new street box uh, so all you need to do is select which of these goods or mainline it goes into now there are so few goods trains if any going down this line you might never need to use that so i leave this the route going into the up main and i leave it on auto and the same i come out of the up main and leave that on auto i will soon see if the new street signal puts a train into the down goods then i'll see that and i'll get to decide is he about to send a fast train up the inside or do i need to cancel that down and put the train back onto here so so like i say leave them there and you don't really have to think about it the other thing is there is a level crossing here but it's kind of a, a, a crossing keeper worked level crossing 
and all you need to do like i say if you leave the roots autoed across it then effectively a crossing keeper is taking care of that for you which is nice because sometimes the level crossings on some simulations are a nightmare to keep on top of so we don't need to worry about that um, but it won't be lowered unless you set a route across it so you're better off leaving the route set and letting the crossing keeper um, do his business and then the last bit is this branch up here over towards Bescott so the reason that loop is useful is any trains from here going to Bescott have to use that branch because they obviously can't get to here um, and the other one like I say sometimes you've got empty coaching trains so in the morning Oxley is quite a large uh, carriage siding stroke maintenance depot so you get empty trains say Virgin trains they're um, Pendolinos in this era come out of Oxley and they might go up here they might go up the branch and go off to, to Bescott and Rugeley or maybe to Rugby or wherever they're going to in the morning so the branch for the most part works the same as the rest of the simulation there isn't anything particularly special it looks a bit complicated because of the sidings but i haven't used either of those so again i leave that signal on auto be a bit careful depending on the platform you're heading to because you have this weird crossover here that allows you to get into platform one uh, sorry four and three whereas if you come down here you can only get into platform two and one well, and five although we don't go to five so just be a little bit careful but otherwise that's normal and the last thing is the cc cctv style level crossing now these are often a bit of a pain although there's only one of them so it's not too bad and like all of the other cctv crossings you need to set a route across it at a certain point so you don't really get much notice a train goes doop you know it's appeared at darleston junction now what i usually do is i wait for this first track circuit to go red and then once that track circuit goes red i then set my route either across there or down there depending on where i'm going and then once i've set the route i will lower the level crossing and then once it flashes clear that means it's ready to hit clear you hit the button and the light will go green which is fine occasionally as with all the other simulations you might click clear and it doesn't work you think what's going on and you'll see a little message up here saying there's a road vehicle blocking the, the level crossing and that's really annoying because what you have to do is you have to cancel your route first then hit raise and then hit once it's raised you hit lower but that lower will take a bit longer than usual because obviously it's waiting for the car to get out of the way or whatever and then go through the whole thing again set the route lower it blah 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 blah. so there isn't mil like tons of traffic up here so it's not too bad but yeah just be aware that that you don't really get any notice whereas coming in this direction my usual rule of thumb is once i see a track circuit hit a double yellow um that normally it would be this signal because that would normally be set across here um so if i just unpause that a second so you can see that's normally the double yellow if you've put, put a route across there as soon as this track circuit here goes red that's when i lower it because in most cases it's a freight train it's not going very fast i think the limit along here is 50 so it's not going millions of miles an hour so it's plenty of time to lower the crossing and clear the route without you getting that error when you you take too long and it says excessive delay so it's pretty straightforward honestly um i recommend you just just have a go if you're really really nervous use the 12 o'clock midnight timetable because there's a little bit of stuff that's pretty quiet overnight you can then use f3 speed it up a bit i mean at certain points of the night only three trains an hour uh, so that might give you a little chance to have a little play around if you're a little bit more confident and you don't want that boring early morning stuff you can obviously start with the 445 one which is when stuff starts coming out of the carriage sidings for um, business and although it's a fairly regular pattern it isn't exactly so just be a little bit careful sometimes the 1g train comes in before the the train from up here sometimes it doesn't the trains come in northbound sometimes use platform one sometimes platform two obviously with this train in platform two turning around all of them have to use platform one but in the morning before these trains are here um, you'll sometimes get two northbound trains one going out of one one going out of two the good thing is you can put 
a train into two while another one is leaving from one um, they don't block the routes don't block each other which is nice uh, but just be aware of that and then obviously things like this you can see uh, becomes 2a23 so you need to remember to change those over as they come in um and then other than that yeah just just kind of enjoy yourself the instructions are all online on the simsig website but to be honest there aren't many instructions it's quite straightforward and 